G'day and welcome back to Project 300. Today I'm going to discuss the fridge and power module that I've made for the back of the 300. I've never been a fan of filling my car up with heavy equipment on a permanent basis. I understand why people might want to install drawer and fridge systems permanently, but in my case the car's a daily drive and I often want the full load area available or the ability to use the third row seats. On a day trip I'll just put a small fridge in the back and plug it into one of the Richards power outlets. But for longer trips, the advent of slim, high capacity lithium batteries has provided the opportunity to make a complete fridge and power module, adding more functionality and still allowing for easy removal. Incorporating the battery into the removable module means that there's no need to add a second heavy battery under the bonnet full time. I went this way because when I thought about it, I realised that the only time I really needed a second battery was when I was running a fridge for extended periods. So this is what I've come up with, designed around my trusty 20 year old Trailblazer 50 fridge. The module consists of a carpeted aluminium floor which bolts down using the 300 standard cargo hook mounting points. There's a hinge to fold the floor up so you can easily get the module in and out of the car. The fridge itself mounts to a Dun & Watson tilting fridge slide, which sits inside a custom aluminium enclosure to give the fridge some airspace. I've actually disabled the tilting function most of the time because I'm tall enough to see in without it tilting. The side of the enclosure between the fridge and the side of the car serves as the mounting surface for all of the electronics. And that's where the module really gets interesting. After speaking at length to Stefan from Richards Auto in South Australia, we came up with what I believe are the best options to make this setup as useful as possible. Up the front here, there's a 100 amp hour custom lithium LIFE PO4 battery. These are top quality batteries made in Australia and with a seven year warranty. The biggest reason I chose this particular battery over the other slimline options though, was the high output BMS, which can cope with loads of 180 amps, almost double what other slimline batteries can handle. That's really important because amongst other things, it's powering this Red Arc 1200 watt inverter which can draw 120 amps all by itself. The battery also powers the fridge of course, plus I've added a second Anderson plug for loads like a second fridge or freezer. And also a series of USB and USB-C charging ports. A MIDI fuse block and a blade fuse box protect all the items connected to the setup. The battery is monitored by a Red Arc smart battery monitor, which gives state of charge and battery status info via Bluetooth to your phone using the Red Arc Red Vision app. Keeping the battery charged is another Red Arc product, the Australian made BCDC40 Core Charger. This is a 40 amp lithium compatible charger, which can accept charging inputs from both the car itself and also a solar setup, which I've enabled via another Anderson connector at the rear of the module. This brings me to one of the other reasons I really like this concept. It's completely self-contained with the only electrical connection to the vehicle being a 50 amp Anderson plug. The module can power the inverter and the fridge even when it's out of the car. Recharging the battery is as simple as connecting some solar panels or plugging into the car for fast charging. Powering the module when it's in the car, Richards Auto created me a customised version of their dual DC outlet for the 300 series. Instead of using the standard 30 amp Anderson connection from the rear fuse box, my outlet is rated at a full 70 amps. To achieve this, Richards made me a pre-terminated heavy cable, which is powered from the second ignition relay I installed previously as part of their trailer power cable kit. The cable runs from the main battery through the firewall and down to the back of the car along the sill trims, alongside the trailer power supply I installed previously. It then connects to the DC power outlet panel in place of the regular Anderson plug, providing sufficient current for the 40 amp charger to power the module. You'll find installation videos for the regular DC power outlet and the trailer Anderson cables on the Project 300 website. The top of the module becomes a shelf where I typically mount camera, drone and assorted equipment chargers powered from the inverter or the USB outlets. On the canning trip, I also installed a microwave oven onto the module, plus a Makita 36 volt kettle and fast battery charger, all secured by webbing straps. The rest of the space on the module was consumed by a Starlink kit. The inverter comfortably runs all of this equipment, and the 40 amp charger had no problem keeping up with the loads and recharging the battery during each day of driving. 
You'll find more details on the design and wiring of the module, plus all the components I used on the Project 300 website. If you'd like to build a similar setup for yourself, contact the team at Richard's Auto, who would no doubt be able to sort you out with all the products required and also make up any custom cabling you might need to get it all powered. Please follow the build at project300.com.au where you'll find a growing number of free guides for modifying and maintaining a Land Cruiser 300, including links to find all of the correct parts and service items. See you next time.